Hey guys, uh, Matt Denham here. I am one of the offering managers for Watson Analytics for social media. And uh, I'm going to be starting up this YouTube channel as a means of uh, really showing what is, you know, the art of the possible essentially with what you can do with Watson Analytics for social media. So um, would love to get some comments on, on how you guys are using it and any problems that you're running into. But um, for the purposes of this sort of introductory video, uh, I was just going to kind of highlight, uh, you know, what it is, give a high-level overview, explain kind of how easy it is to get started. So why don't we do that? Here I am uh, within the UI for Watson Analytics for social media. And uh, for those who don't know, this is a sort of a SaaS model where um, it's a monthly subscription. You just need to sign in, and uh, you're here in your browser, and you can get started. So. I've got a couple of different projects that uh, that I can show you here. So let's let's open one of these up. Now, before we get to the analysis, let's take a look at how I got there. So here, it's a very generic example of, um, you know, the topics that I want to perhaps perhaps examine on social media. So here, I've looked at topics like eggs, dairy, bakery. Right. This is a grocery example. So. Um, you know, what are people saying online about these different um, grocery departments, I guess. But here, when you're looking to define a topic, the topic could be anything that you want to analyze. So it could be, you know, a, a, your specific product, your specific brand. You know, if I want to compare product one to product two, um, you know, my brand versus a competitor, I could do that here. So this, uh, when I'm defining, the, you know, these topics again, uh, this is how the, the data is going to be pulled back from social media. So, um, you know, let's let's take a look at meat, for example. This is where I want to define the conversations around meat. So anytime somebody would say something like meat, chicken, beef, pork, hamburger, uh, you can read all of these um, online, then we want to include that in our example. And so, um, you know, in terms of context, um, you know, not want, or at least, you know, perhaps to take out the hunting example or something else, um, we're going to use context here of an, it, it's, you can basically think of it like an and. So anytime somebody says beef and food or beef and eat, you know, cook, recipe, dinner, that's the type of uh, data that's going to come back. And so now over here on the right, and this is where it really begins to get a little bit more cognitive, um, you can see the suggestions that, uh, you know, that we help at least guide you a little bit on, on how to make your model that much better, right? So, um, you know, it, I can look through here, I can add other terms, or I can exclude terms, right? So, you know what, maybe uh, maybe I want to exclude Trump uh, as a potential potential term. I could do that, I could add that here too as, as an exclude term, um, and then that would be factored out. Same with uh, anything related to X factor. There's, there's a number of different things that could come up here. Um, across social media obviously it's a public forum so anything can show up this is where you can you know include which terms um, to include and exclude in order to uh, to really refine that model to be what you need it to be all right so now that we've sort of narrowed down our uh, our model we've defined our topic uh, the next thing that we're going to want to do is define the themes and so you can think of themes as, as perhaps attributes of, of the topics that you're looking to analyze um, this is only done during the analysis phase. So this isn't really taken into consideration when you're going and pulling the data. It's only after that data has come back uh, and we're doing the analysis of the data um, that we could look at these different attributes of how people are talking about the topics that you've, that you've defined. So when we're talking about different uh, grocery departments, for example, are people talking about organic items? Are they talking about the price, the freshness, etc.? And it's the, it's really the same process where I could go into here, uh, define a couple of keywords that I want to include, and then if there's any exclude terms or, or context terms, I could add those as well. And really, that's I, I mean that's the key part here is um, you define your topics to pull the data back, you define your themes to to segment and uh, analyze th those topics, and then you pick a date range. You pick you know, which languages you want to include. Here I, I only took English, but we have a number of different languages um, that I could add on here if I wanted to do that. And as I'm doing that, you'll see that this, uh, we've got this running estimate of the number of documents that are going to meet these criteria, right? So uh, a document could be a blog post, it could be a tweet, whatever it is. Uh, we've got 92,000 documents that are going to come back 
uh, if we were to use all of this. So I'm just going to uncheck these, um, and we'll see that the, the estimate kind of adjusts to um, actually what my data set is. So also uh, worth noting here is a, a quick, quick overview of um, the, the data sources that I included here. So, you know, we're looking at uh, Twitter, we're looking at message boards and forums, review sites I didn't include in this analysis, but I could toggle that on. Uh, we've got Facebook, you know, video sites, again, I didn't include, but that's something that you could include as well. Uh, blogs and news sites. So it's going to go across all of these different, uh, these different mediums and pull back the data set based on the keywords that I defined in my topics. So once I've done that, I can bring up the analysis. And so there are a couple of different charts that I could look at here. Um, so I'll just go to sort of the, the, the first one. And, you know, as this loads up, I should say that the first thing you might notice is the number of documents, number of mentions. Um, so I'll quickly provide a clarification there. Number of documents, 42,000. As I say, each document could be a tweet or it could be a blog post or it could be, um, you know, a video site, uh, video post that a comment has come back on, etc. And then the number of mentions is each um, each attribute, I guess, that uh, or each topic um, that could be defined in a given document. So if that's not clear, basically if somebody says, I really like, I, I'm a meat eater, I really like meat, but I don't like fruits and vegetables, those are two of the topics that I defined. Those, that tweet, if that's what they ha had written, would have two mentions within a single document. So that's why there's this uh, disparity in the numbers here. I hope that's, I hope that's somewhat clear, but um, this is what you get after you've created the data set. So, right, imagine I, I've gone through, I've created my model, I click go, um, you know, 10 or 15 minutes later, I've pulled that data set back and, and here now we're looking at the resulting analysis. So if I wanted to see who's talking about what, you know, identify a given spike in the, the meat conversation, um, you know, here I've got the, the actual mentions that, uh, uh, that help control that, uh, that view. So we provide these out-of-the-box visualizations to help guide you, but uh, I'll take a pause from, from looking through the visualizations to kind of highlight that Watson Analytics for Social Media lives within Watson Analytics, so it's not just these out-of-the-box visualizations um, that we think are relevant for you, but the data set lives within Watson Analytics also. So if you want to go back and um, start analyzing that data set, doing some data discovery, you know, interacting with the data using natural language, you're more than welcome to do that as well. But here, again, this is sort of a breakdown by the number of topics, by those attributes. So, you know, when we're talking about the different grocery departments, it's perhaps not surprisingly that, um, you know, that we see that freshness is, is sort of the primary thing that people are, are interested in. Breakdown by sentiment, fairly straightforward there as well. Uh, I mean, as a social media tool, we'd expect that uh, we'd be able to do sentiment analysis. We do a bunch of text analysis and sentiment analysis, as well as the author behavior that I'll, I'll show in a quick moment here, but um, just giving you an understanding of, uh, you know, who's talking about what and why. Again, I can drill down onto that and, and kind of see why people might be talking about it. I've got uh, the, different, the different posts that, uh, that come up on the right to help drive that, uh, that information. Uh, I won't go into all of these, but breakdown by geo, breakdown by source, very important if you want to try and identify where it is that people are talking about your products, maybe you don't know. Um, you know, active authors, the, these are those uh, individuals who are writing a lot about your given topic, top sites, where are, are most of these being hit. And uh, I, I will just jump into behavior here because I think it, it, it's an important aspect, right? So we're doing text analysis to underline that uh, users can fit into a couple of different buckets. And maybe I'll do another video that um, digs a little bit deeper into this later, but we bucket people depending on what they've written. So, um, you know, based on, if they tweeted something out that said, you know, I love apples in my grocery example, then we know that they're probably a user of apples, right? And I should clarify, I'm talking about apples, the um, the fruit and not apple, the product, but uh, yeah. So if somebody says, uh, I'm looking forward to this fall when the new apple ship shipment comes available, um, then that's what might be listed here as a prospective user. And then 
perspective churners is important because if the if somebody wrote, I really had a bad experience with this apple um, and threw it out. I'm never going back to that grocery store. That's something that I need to know, right, and why. So um, I could use that as well. And you know, as I've kind of just explained, uh, or as I've I've said this out loud, my apple example that really highlights that if I'm defining this topic of fruits and vegetables, maybe I want to exclude. Um, anything related to the Apple Corporation, because here I'm talking about the fruit and not about the uh, the technology company. So important that I could go back and, and refine my model to uh, to to account for that uh, that case as well. So again, just this was uh, intended to be a sort of an introductory introductory view into um, how you can get started with Watson Analytics. Fairly straightforward, uh, and, and maybe I'll go back and dig into this author behavior. Uh, a little bit deeper on the next video, but uh, certainly please, if you have any questions, uh, post away and I will, uh, I will answer them. All right. Thanks, guys.